Computing the area under the normal curve review. Lesson objectives. Compute the area under the normal curve using a table and also using StackCrunch. Let's begin with the table. This video is a quick review on how to find the area under the normal curve using table 5, the standard normal table. Now a standard normal distribution just means that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Number 1, the area under the standard normal curve when the z-score is between negative 1.25 and 2.08. Let's first draw a picture. The lower bound is negative 1.25, the upper bound is 2.08, and if we were to write this in interval notation, we want the area in between these two values. So this is how you write an inequality showing I want all numbers between these two values, the lower bound and the upper bound. Now using table 5, we first look up the area to the left of 2.08, and then we write that probability down and then we look up the area to the left of negative 1.25 we write that probability down and subtract the two you should get a probability of 0.8756 number two now we want to find the area under the curve that is at least 0 0.75 at least means area to the right and if you remember Table 5 always gives you area to the left, so we have to do the complement of that and we do 1 minus what's in the table. Area to the right and area to the left are always complements of each other. So if we want to find the area to the right, we have to do 1 minus the area to the left. The lower bound in this case is 0 0.75, that's sort of our starting point, and our upper bound goes to positive infinity. In interval notation, we want greater than or equal to 0.75. So using the table, we do 1 minus 0.7734, and you should get 0.2266. And it's always good to draw a picture, so that way you can always verify that this answer is matching your picture. So from the picture, we know that our answer should be less than 0.5 because here is the mean, which is also equal to the median, the 50th percentile, and the area to the right of the mean is 50%. We don't want all of 50%, we only want this part, so we know our answer must be less than 0.5. So if we would have just reported what's in the table, we would have said the answer was 0.7734, which does not fit our picture. That number is bigger than 50%. So a picture is a good way of verifying your answer, sort of like a double check. Number three, we want to find the area under the curve that is at most z equals 1.15. So here's our picture. Clearly this is more than 50%, so our answer should be more than 0.5. The lower bound is negative infinity, and we're going all the way up to our upper bound, which is z equals 1.15. And in notation, this would be z is less than or equal to 1.15. The area, using table 5, would be 0.8749. Number 4, we want the area that is more than z equals negative 0.63. More than means area to the right, and again, from our picture, we know this is going to be more than 50% because just this part is 50%, and then we're adding this second part, so our answer should be more than 50%. The lower bound is negative 0.63, the upper bound is positive infinity, and the inequality notation would be z is greater than or equal to a negative 0.63. So the area that we want to find is area to the right. We have to do 1 minus what's in the table, and we get 0.7357. And again, this number matches our picture. Number 5, we want the area that is less than z equals negative 0.7. So drawing the picture, the mean is 0. We want a negative 
0.7 so that's to the left of the mean of 0 now we look this up in the table and this is area to the left and that's what the table is going to provide us so the lower bound is negative infinity the upper bound is this negative 0.7 interval notation we want z to be less than or equal to a negative 0.7 and the area should be less than 0.5 and the table does agree with that number six we want to the right of z equals 1.92 so now we have a positive z we want the area to the right so from our picture this has to be less than 50 percent so with the a lower bound of our z 1.92 the upper bounds positive infinity interval notation that's all z's greater than or equal to 1.92 and again we have to do one minus what's in the table and we get 0.0274 and again this number agrees with our picture number seven we want to find the area to the left of z equals negative 1.16 Here's our picture, and using table 5, you should get an area of 0 0.1230. Number 8, we want to find the area that is more than z equals 1.28 or less than z equals negative 1.71. Being careful with our picture, we want less than negative 1.71. Sometimes this is known as the left tail. So that's numbers less than negative 1.71 or we want more than, that means greater than, 1.28. Okay, so that's what we would shade in here. This is also known as a right tail. So we find this probability, we find this probability, and then we add them. Or means that we're going to add them. So interval notation, this would be z is less than or equal to negative 1.71 or z is greater than or equal to 1.28. Using our table, we can just look up this z-score and that will give us area to the left. And to figure out this z-score, I need to do 1 minus what's in the table for this 1.28. And if you add up these two probabilities, so this would be 0.0436 plus, this would be 0 0.1003, you should get 0.1439. Number nine, now we want to find the area under the curve within one standard deviation of the mean. Well that means our z-score is a negative one up to a positive one. Both these are within one standard deviation of the mean. So our lower bound is negative one, our upper bound as z equals to a positive one and interval notation we want numbers in between negative one and positive one so again this is an in-between so we want to look up the area to the left of one write that probability down look up the area to the left of negative one write that probability down and then subtract the two you should get 0.6826 and if you recall the empirical rule, if you go one standard deviation below the mean and one above the mean, that's 68%. And actually, table five allows us to be a little bit more precise. It's actually 68.26%. Number 10, find the area under the curve that is more than two standard deviations from the mean. Well, that would look something like this. So we want to find the area that is more than two standard deviations on the positive but also less than negative two so again here we have a problem that we have a left tail and the right tail we want to find those probabilities using table five and then add them so our notation is we want the z score to be less than or equal to negative two or the z score to be equal to two or greater and using table five the area to the left of negative 2 turns out to be 0 0.0228 and if we do 1 minus what's the area to the left of positive 2 you should get in the table 0 0.9772 and since we want the area to the right we do 1 minus that or we could just simply say if this left tail is 0 0.0228 by symmetry this is also equal to 
0.0228. So we could simply just multiply these two together and we get 0.0456. And if you remember the empirical rule, it says that this area between negative 2 and 2 is 95%. So that means that what's left over is 5% and that agrees with this. It's, it's a little bit less than 5%, but empirical rule is just a good rule of thumb. This is a little bit more precise. Number 11 and 12, these problems are working backwards. We're given a area, a probability, a percentile, and we want to find the z-score that corresponds to that area. So we want to find the z-score that separates the bottom 20% from the top 80 percent. So the z-score is cutting the graph into two regions. The area to the left is 20 percent. The area to the right is 80 percent. So this is what the graph would look like. The area to the left of this unknown z-score is 20 percent or 0 0.2000. This is how it would look in table 5. The area to the right of the z-score is 0.8, 80 percent or 0.8000. The area to the left and the area to the right always add up to be 100%. So how do we find that z-score? Well, since table 5 gives us the area to the left, what we want to do is we want to find the closest thing to 20% in the body of the table. And that will tell us that both the column and the row, and that will be our z-score. It doesn't matter if it's over 20% or under 20%, just whatever value is closest to 20%. So here's a screenshot of table five. So if we go down, we want to find the closest value to 0 0.200. And here we can see that 0.2 is in between these two numbers. Which one is closer? Well, if we think of this as money, this is $20.05. This is $19.77. This one is closer. So this will tell us what row and what column. Okay, so this turns out to be equal to a z-score of negative 0.84. So the area to the left of negative 0.84 is the closest to 20%. That is our z-score that we're trying to find. Number 12, now we want to find the z-score that separates the bottom 90% from the top 10%. So our picture would look like this. This is 90%, this is 10%. Clearly we can see that the z-score is going to be positive. Over here, clearly the z-score would have to be negative because it's less than 50%. Here our z-score has to be positive because the area to the left is more than 50%, it's 90. So the area to the left is 90%, area to the right is 10%, and if we use our table 5, we want to find the closest thing to 0.9000. In the body of the table, we want to find the closest to 90%. So 90% is in between these two values. Which one is closer? This one is. So this will tell us what row and also what column. And that turns out to be a z-score of 1.28. So that 1.28 separates the bottom 90% from the top 10%. Thanks for watching.